Thanks. And I mean, this is in, this is sort of a, an overview, a high level. I mean, if you get into the details, there may be some. I mean, all computational codes have some sort of heuristics in there, or some things that you know they find work better than others, or maybe some additional physics. So this is sort of very high level, basic, but basically. You're simultaneously computing the, the fracture width, um, the displacement discontinuities, right? Um, or the, you know, the displacement discontinuities are the fracture width for mode one. Um, and the pressure solution from uh, lubrication theory. And then from that, you evaluate K1 and K2 and decide if the crack's going to grow. And if it's going to grow, you define the direction. And then with, when you know the direction, you extend the crack. And here's where sort of the gotchas or assumptions come in. You, you're just putting an element out there, right? You put an element out there. How long, how big do you know to make the element? I told you earlier, I mean, the solution for the displacement discontinuity becomes more accurate as the elements get smaller. So ideally, we want an infinitely small element out there, but that's not practical, right? So how big an element do you put? Well, you just put one. <laughs> you just put one out there, and then you make an assumption that that whatever length you decided, you know, whatever length you extended the crack, you make the assumption that that extended at a known velocity. Okay? And usually this, this known velocity, so extend the crack at known velocity. And well, what's the crack extension velocity? Right? You don't really know, so you have to have some kinetic relationship. You have to have a constitutive law, essentially. And a lot of times, uh, as a rough guess, the crack extension velocity can be something on the order of half the, um, the Rayleigh wave speed. Right? So uh, the Rayleigh wave speed is sort of the surface wave speed, and it's, it's sort of the limiting Nothing could be faster than that. No crack could propagate faster than that. And there's quite a bit of experimental evidence that says, you know, it propagates somewhere between half and the full Rayleigh wave speed, but certainly no faster than a Rayleigh wave speed. So this is sort of where the, the issue with this type of model, one of the issues with this type of model is that you're not computing the wave speed, you're, you're assuming it. Uh, I'm sorry, the crack propagation speed. But nothing propagates instantaneously, right? There's always some acceleration. And if you look at crack dynamic crack propagation experiments I mean for, for you know, crack velocity versus time, uh, so the slope of what I'm about to draw would be the acceleration of the crack. I mean, there's always some acceleration. So if usually they approach some constant wave speed, and that's the crack propagation wave speed. But there, there's always some acceleration. So you either have to assume, assume uh, a sort of a constituent model for this guy, or you just use this value. But in either way, you're assuming the crack propagation speed, which is not really a good thing. You want a, a good model will compute the crack propagation speed. So, so one of the, mo the problems is, so, so the idea is in, you just stick an element out there, assume the crack propagation speed, and then solve for the time that passed. Right? So you know the speed. You can solve for the time that passed for the crack traveling that far, and then you update all the other. You go back, solve for width, solve for, you know, update everything again, and iterate. And and so then you, this is you know, you do this progressively, and you, you get crack propagation. So there, I mean, there's some other assumptions in the model. So, you know, if you want to sort of talk about limitations. You have to assume <laughs> crack kinetic relationship. Okay. 
which means, you know, how fast the crack propagates. Another limitation is that, you know, if there's any heterogeneity in the body, you're not modeling. Basically, all of the physics are modeled at the crack level. Fluid inside the crack, there's no heterogeneity outside that. So heterogeneity in material properties. You know, in terms of you could have a higher elastic modulus on, you know, above you than below you, and that's not taken into account, assuming everything is homogeneous and isotropic. Leak off. What do you do about leak off? You're not solving a poor elastic equation out there in the body, so you have to assume the leak off is some model. So that's, uh, we didn't really talk about that. You know, I say leak off, we talk about there's fluid in the crack, it's leaking into the matrix, right, due to diffusion. Uh, in shales, not a lot, <laughs> of course, but it, but it does happen, and it does affect the solution, so you have to do something. Uh, one simple thing is a Carter leak off model that's added to these a lot of times. So this is an analytic model that basically compute, computes the pressure drop that you'll see due to the surface area of fluid diffusing into the rock. Um, I mean, there's, there's some other sort of issues. If you have multiple cracks propagating, um, you know, the coalescence of, of two cracks coming together, uh, have, the getting the computation right and the physics right as that occurs, I mean, it does happen physically, but the computational aspects can be tricky uh, with this type of model. Um, what else? There's one other big one I wanted to mention. Oh, fracture height. Everything we assume so far is all plane strain. So it assumed the infinite fracture height, and you do these computations in a plane, right? So you just see the crack fracture going this way. But the fractures are height limited, uh, and that, that can have a big effect. So uh, a lot of times, the, the more advanced models nowadays are what, what's called P3D or pseudo-3D. So when you see the simulation results, you'll just see them in a plane, fractures propagating in a plane, but there is an analytic correction for the height of the fra fracture that's added to this, these solutions. Sort of counts for that. So, But even in these that are corrected for height, the, the fractures are still planar in, in the height direction, meaning the fractures are still straight vertical. <coughs> you can't have any kind of out of plane tilting of the fracture, which certainly could and does occur. So, just things to be careful of. Um, if you ever get to attend one of Dr. Sharma's JIPs on hydraulic fracturing, you'll see much more advanced models than what we present here. And basically, we're full finite element models solving all the physics. But again, these type of models um, really need to run on supercomputers and they're not, uh, most of the commercial companies that sell these to operators don't, they, they use a, a similar model to what I outlined here. Again, there, some details may be different. Okay. Review for the exam. Everybody's waking up now. <laughs> <laughs>